Eagles come into Rochester with a 2 and 0 record taking on the Zebras 3 and 0 on the season. Welcome to beautiful Bob Copeland Field today where we have a little bit better weather, better weather conditions than we had last night. All right, we'll get going with the starting lineups. First off for the Culver Military Eagles. Batting first and playing second base will be Roman Snedeker. Batting second, playing center field, Connor Schmiedlin. Batting third and playing shortstop, Luke Grunberg. In the cleanup position and catching will be Colin Lazick. Batting fifth and playing left field, Beck McGee. Pitching today for the Eagles will be no number three, Tim Flanagan. DH in for Flanagan will be Jack Quick. Batting seventh, playing third base, Nick Fumit. Batting eighth, playing first base, Evan Gerber. And rounding out the lineup, playing right field, will be Trey Schumacher. Now, for our own Rochester Zebras. Batting first, playing shortstop, Rick McLaughlin. Batting second, playing center field, Ethan Medina. Batting third, and on the bump tonight, will be Evan Elliott. Batting fourth, playing third base, Tanner Reinhardt. Batting fifth, and playing first base, Aaron Huffman. Batting sixth. Playing second base, Braden Zink. Batting seven. In right field tonight will be Hunter Campbell. Batting eight. And DHing will be Gavin Young. Catching will be Jake Seifer. And batting ninth is number seven, Colton Fervida. Now, would everyone who is able please rise for the national anthem? Gentlemen, please remove your hats. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands of one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all. How come we can't get Mr. Screeton to sing? Yeah. Can't sing Party in the USA? Yeah, yeah, probably not. This should be the Rochester High School school song. <laughs> All right. Ready to play ball. Again, the lineups for Culver Academy. to Snedeker, Schmiedlin, and Grunberg, the top three. Lasik, McGee, and Quigg, the middle three. Fumich, Gerber, and Schumacher, the bottom three. And Flanagan, the pitcher, is their flex player. For Rochester, McLaughlin, Medina, and Elliott, the top three. That's been the top three in every batting order they've had this year. McLaughlin, Medina, and Elliott, the top three. Reinerts, Huffman, and Zink, the middle three. Campbell, Young, and Faverda, the bottom three. And the flex player is catcher Jake Seifer. Culver Academy, they won their first game 8-6 to six over Morgan Township. They were down 4 nothing after the three innings in that game. So that's a team that... Don't think they're going to give up if you get an early lead on them because they've already shown that they can come back and win a game. And then yesterday they scored 10 in the first and wound up winning 31 to 1. For Rochester, they've basically been uh, 
Rochester trailed 2-1 to one after the first inning against Plymouth the other night, but they've basically been ahead in most of their games. And, again, they've only allowed five runs in three games. So they have allowed five runs in three games, and Culver Academy is averaging 19.5 runs per game. So uh, something something's going to give. Something's got to give, yeah. and somebody's going to lose their first game, like we said. Defensively, we've seen Hunter Campbell play left field. This is the first time we've seen him play right field. And Evan Elliott's played just about every inning of every game in right field, so somebody's got to play right field with Evan on the mound tonight. And uh, interesting that Coach Good goes with, uh, also puts Hunter in the lineup and puts Cypher in the flex spot. Yeah. Uh, again, the Rochester got pretty good production from the bottom third of that order uh, throughout the season. Let's see if they can keep that up. It's uh, Reinert's at third, McLaughlin at short, Zink at second, and Huffman at first. We've been it's pretty much kind of the uh, – we've seen that unit out there a lot. No uh, Luke Hunting in the lineup. We've seen Luke a lot this year, and I'm sh I wouldn't be surprised if we saw him off the bench in this game. And then in the outfield, uh, Faverda and left, Medina in center, and as we said, Campbell in right. Faverda's played a lot of left uh, in the past, and – Medina hasn't played a whole lot of center prior to this year, but he's looked really comfortable out there. And uh, Corey Good really likes him out there, obviously replacing Kyle Reinertz. I mean, Kyle was a great defensive outfielder. Okay, first pitch of the game. Elliot to Roman Snedeker outside. Roman is a junior, second baseman. Hitting 625 on the young season. He's 5 for 8, two RBIs. Low, two zero. Elliot stares in, and fires. Ground ball to third, handled on the backhand by Tanner Reinerts, and he throws to Hoffman for the out. Again, for a guy who hasn't played much third base, he's. Pretty comfortable over there. Got kind of got a nice hop. Yeah. Well, he's played he's played a lot of baseball. Yeah. I mean, probably one of the most experienced freshmen that you'll ever see as far as number of games played. Uh, I'll bring up the very talented junior center fielder Connor Schmiedlin, and he takes high for a ball. Rochester appeals. First base umpire says no. He did not go around. Kind of hard with a left-hander to really yeah. overrule the initial call. High 2-0. Oh. Ball three, low. Strike call. Schmidlin hit 580 last year. 47 hits and 81 at bats. And he had a team high 33 RBIs. And if you get if you get 20 RBIs, you're having a good year. 25, you're really good. 30, you're Elite, but Elliot gets him on a routine ground ball to second base, and Zink throws him out. That was really good work there by Evan. He had yeah. uh, fallen behind 3-0, comes back, gets two strikes, and then gets him to ground out. That was yeah. that was a good uh, good at bat pitch there for uh, Evan. Good job. And that'll bring up the junior shortstop Luke Grunberg. Luke is three for seven on the young season. Hit 347 last year as a sophomore. Fouled off, 0-1-1. 3.47, and Grunberg had 26 RBIs last year. He was second on the team behind Schmiedlin. Ooh, Outside. Just missed on that one. 
You can see that going right down the uh, left-hand batter's box line. Ground ball, not a hard hit. Elliott pounces on it. Fires to Huffman for the out to retire the side. Three up, three down, and three ground ball outs. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left at the end of half an inning. No score between Rochester and Culver Academy. You're watching RTC TV 4. Well, back here at Bob Copeland Field after half an inning. The score remains 0-0, zero, zero and... Good, uh, good start to the game for Evan Elliott, Val. Nice, uh, nice job of uh, recovering there. I was really impressed with that second batter coming back from 3-0 and able to uh, to get the full count and then ground him out. Yeah, I mean, Culver Academy, they, they were shot out of a cannon last night. They scored 10 in the first. Today they go down in order in the first, so good start. It'll be McLaughlin, Medina, and Elliott due for Rochester in the bottom of the first. Tim Flanagan on the mound. Talked about that 8-6 to six win over Morgan Township earlier this year. Flanagan was the winning pitcher in that game. Tim's a senior. He went 1-2 and two with a 4.88 ERA last year in 12 appearances on the mound. 25 strikeouts and 28 and two-thirds innings, but he also walked 18. The guy who led them in innings last year was Oscar Stewart. He pitched 40 and two-thirds, but he is not in the lineup today. The guy who was uh, Flanagan was second on their team in innings pitched. The guy who was third on their team in innings pitched graduated Boardman. So uh, Flanagan is... Uh, the most uh, experienced mound guy on their team. Tarek McLaughlin lead things off. Tarek is 2 for 8 on the young season hitting 250. Shows bunt, drags one. Flanagan picks it up barehanded, throws, got him. I get that. I think Tarek, if he had to do it over again, would Probably want to put it closer to the line. Either get it closer to the line or drag it on the right side. Right. Nice play there by Flanagan. Ethan Medina is the batter. Ethan is hitting 455 on the young season. He's 5 for 11. And he takes high. Strike call. Ethan stands a little more upright, uh, even than I kind of remember him. But again, just line drives just jump off his bat. Uh, is, is that the Val curse? <laughs> <laughs> One and two, the count. Is that like saying he's an 85% free throw shooter and then they miss one? Fouled off. Ethan, 5 for 11. He has one RBI in the year. Got him. Strikeout number one for Flanagan. And that'll bring up the senior pitcher, Evan Elliott. Elliott hitting 364 in the young season. He's 4 for 11. He's got two singles, a double, a homer. He's tied with Tanner Reynolds for the team leading RBIs with five. Ball one. Softball update, Rochester leads Culver 9-1, second inning. Low and away, 2-2. Two two. Or 2-0, two oh, excuse me. Swing and a miss. 
I know I can be off on my counts, but I didn't think I was off that far. Yeah. <laughs> Foul ball. Two and two the count. I had a, I put something on my Facebook page. It was a joking thing on the onion. It was uh umpire who doesn't know what the count is, hopes better rips off a few foul balls. Yeah, yeah, I saw <laughs> that. Well you you had the two and two right, you were just uh, a couple minutes early. Yeah. Foul ball. LASIK unable to hang on to that one. Swing and a miss at a pitch of the dirt. That's a strikeout. Odd will have to be completed at a first base, but, but Lasik's throw is high. And Elliott's safe. Be a K and an E2. Rochester has a runner at first with one out. Tanner Reiner's the freshman third baseman is the batter. Tanner hitting 700. He's 7 for 10. Throw to first is not in time. That was impressive watching Tanner yesterday. I mean, facing a really good pitcher like Erickson, and I mean, the first pitch he sees in the second inning, he just hammers a line drive to left field. Yeah. I mean, not only can he hit a fastball, he can pull it. Yeah. Let's well, see if they can take advantage of the academy mistake there on that drop third strike. They're. Boy. Elliot just does get back. <laughs> just barely got back. Elliot, yeah. he takes big leads out there. We saw that yesterday. He's. Mm -hmm. He takes really aggressive leads. Lanigan pitches. Line drive. Can you get under it? Yep. Caught <laughs> to retire the side. So for Rochester in the bottom of the first, no runs, no hits, one error, one left. The end of one inning, no score between Rochester and Culver Academy, and we'll be right back on RTC TV4. Hey, welcome back here to Copeland Field. After an inning, no score between the Academy and the Rochester Zebras. Zebras did get a base runner, but uh, not able to move him over as Reinhardt's lined out to second. That's how you get a, that's how you get Tanner Reinhardt's out these days. <laughs> Hope he hits his line drives right at you. Yeah. I mean he I mean he's seven for ten and that's how they get him out. Yep. It will be LASIK, McGee, and Quig due for Culver Academy here in the top of the second. LASIK hit 345 with uh, 16 RBIs last year, so here's another good hitter. Like we said, this is kind of not a big slugging team, but they're just kind of a keep-the-line-moving team. Well, Evan Elliott looked good in the top of the first. Let's see what he can do here against the three or four, five, and six batters for the academy here in the top of inning number two.
LASIK hitting 250 on the young season. He's one for four. Elliott throws a four seam fastball high, one and oh. That one's a little bit high, two and oh. Pitch is inside. Ball three. That had some pretty good zip to it. It looked like one of the harder ones he's thrown. Yeah, yeah. Hi, that's a base on balls. mentioned LASIK had been uh, one for four, but that's his third walk of the season, so his on-base percentage is over 500. And that'll bring up the sophomore left fielder, Beck McGee. He shows bunt. He lays it down. He puts it in play. Elliott throws. Huffman makes the catch. Making a big turn is LASIK, but he gets back on the mm. bag. Just about uh, went too far there. Mm-hmm. Good job there by the Zebras recognizing that uh, turn. and Right, before before I could even look and see if they would put a courtesy runner on, they, LASIK is running for himself, and, boy, he was aggressive. That will bring up the sophomore DH, Jack Quigg. Quigg hitting 429 on the young year. He's 3 for 7. Pitches outside. One of his hits was a double. Flashes at that one and fouls it off. One and one. You knew it was windy yesterday just watching guys' pants. Hmm. Their pants were just kind of billowing in the wind. Not as much of that today, but still a little bit. The one one. Foul ball. Looked like a breaking ball got him off balance. One and two. Elliot. Stairs in. McLaughlin right behind LASIK. Got him. Swinging. Fastball. Two down. Strikeout number one for Evan Elliott. That high fastball is, can is, can be such an effective pitch mm -hmm. because it's it's tempting, but it's also hard to catch up to. Mm -hmm. That'll bring up the young freshman third baseman Nick Fumich. First pitch breaking ball. One and another count. Fumich hitting 250 on the young year, one for four. And, again, not knowing much about Nick Fumich, but I know that he's a freshman, and the one thing you, you wonder is, will he expand the strike zone in this situation with, an, with a man in scoring position? That one is low. And Fumich ahead in the count, 2-0. and oh. Grounder. Elliott pounces on it, throws to first. Oh, nice play. That was really nice. That retires the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left in the top of the second at the end of an inning and a half. No score between Rochester and Culver Academy. You're watching RTC TV4. Back here at Bob Copeland Field after inning and a half, the score remains at 0-0, and Academy got their first base runner, Val, got him over to second, but not able to uh, move him any farther along. And 
Good job uh, by Evan Elliott, you know, kind of mixing things up, changing speeds, changing location, and he's been getting a lot of foul balls and, and a lot of ground balls. Yeah, um, he, he he's not afraid to challenge guys with a fastball, but he's very particular where he throws that fastball. He's not just going to say, here it is, hit it, but – he know he kind of knows when and where. He, he throws it a little bit high, kind of that chest level where it's, you know, a hitter's like, boy, I can't really take this because it's kind of in the strike zone, but it's hard to catch up to at the same time. Mm-hmm. And he's, yeah, he gets a little, he's getting a little late movement on that on that breaking ball of his and getting a lot of ground balls. Yeah, doing a really good job through the first two innings. So mm-hmm. we'll see if the yeah. Zebras bats can get going right. here. And, as and, they Co- move. and Corey Good said a lot of good things about his defense. He goes, I want our guys to pitch to contact. I know we're not. We don't have necessarily a whole bunch of guys who just blow people away, but I tr- he trusts his defense enough where, hey, let's pitch to contact, let's make, let's force the other team to put the ball in play, and we'll be good. Well, that third and, out, you know, that Evan got, that right. was uh, perfect, uh, you know. Yeah. A lot of coaches job. Yeah, a lot of coaches say that, but not, <laughs> I'm not sure. Sometimes I'm not sure everyone believes it, but Corey Good believes it, yeah. All right, so we go to the bottom of the second. First pitch from Flanagan to Aaron Huffman is in there for a strike. Huffman will be followed by Braden Zink and Hunter Campbell. Five, six, seven in the Rochester order. Huffman, junior first baseman. I don't think we saw him play first base at all last year, but he's really looked good there this year. Again, I always say this about first baseman, whether it's softball or baseball, but you always you always appreciate, you never appreciate until they have to make that dig at first base that's at a really big time. And Evan did that, er, er, Aaron did that yesterday. Or you, you don't appreciate how good a good first baseman is until they drop one sometimes, but uh, Aaron's handled it all cleanly. 101? Or is it 1 and 2? 1 and 2. Okay. Me and my anecdotes. 2 and 2. <laughs> Busy next few days for Rochester. At Caston tomorrow, at Northwestern on Monday, and then that TRC opener against Whitco on Wednesday in South Whitley. Foul ball. Just missed Ball on the outside. Yeah, yeah, it was close. Base on balls. Good at bat by Huffman. Really, was, com- really yeah. competed in there. Really good fighting back and getting the uh, leadoff man on base. Mm-hmm. I'll bring up the second baseman, Braden Zink. Braden was the winning pitcher yesterday. Hitting 167 on the young season. He's one for six. That one is high. Lasik wants timeout. He doesn't like the baseball. I think the umpire was like, I don't have any more baseballs, so you got to use that one. <laughs> A little different than the majors, obviously. Yeah. As long as the cover's still stitched on, you're going to be using it. Yeah. Yeah, I think there are – I don't know how many balls typically start in the game. I think they start with about four or five maybe. I think they had a few more out of the uh, practice bucket last night just because of uh, yeah. the wind and all the foul balls that were going way back behind the press box. Yeah. And this isn't the big leagues where any ball that gets like a speck of dirt on it and they throw it out of play. Right. right. And they throw it on the batting practice bucket. Strike, 101. Non conference game, uh, Rochester's got two really interesting non conference games that I'm in the month of April that I'm kind of have circled on the calendar. That's a throw that's wild and it gets away from the first baseman. Huffman will get up in advance. Well, I think Gerber, the first baseman, kind of dropped it. I don't think it was that bad of a throw. You can call that an E3, I think. I will concur. 
E3 on the pickoff throw, so runner at second, nobody out. Count one and one on Zink. Let's see how he handles this at bat. Was he going to lay down a bunt? Nope, he puts it in play, but fouls it off. One and two. Thinking about that April Tuesday, April 26th, Rochester will host Logansport here, and that'll be it's a Logansport team that's really been scoring a lot of runs. And, I mean, the Barriers have a great baseball tradition. One and oh, yeah. had a nice win over McCutcheon last night. And then Friday, April 29th, at Carroll. Sectional rival. Yeah. And a team that is ranked uh, in the top ten in Class 2A. Logan Sport coming off of a sectional championship last year. Mm hmm. Ball two. They, they did have a pretty good senior class that graduated, yeah. but they seem to have uh, mm -hmm. just kept going so yeah. far. Logan Sport three and three so far. They've already, played, they've already played four conference games and they're three and one. So hmm. that one, of course, when you play in a turf field. Right. You can get a few of those yeah. in that uh, you can't when you're on natural. Yep. All right. So three and two. So a good at bat for Huffman. No, good competitive at bat for Zink. But how's it going to end? Ooh. Got him swinging. Yep. Good pitch. Strikeout number two for Flanagan. I'll bring up Hunter Campbell, the right fielder. I should mention Rochester's first two conference games are on the road. Inside. They're at Whitco next Wednesday, April 20th, and they're at Valley on Monday, April 25th. So two on the road, and then five. the next five conference games will all be at home. Certainly don't want to start a no and two hole. Strike. I, I don't think one and one would be necessarily devastating, but mm -hmm. but I imagine Whitco will be ready to go after the Zebras beat them in the sectional final last year. Fly ball to center, hit decent. Caught by Schmiedlin. Tagging is Huffman. He's going to try to advance. Good throw. Safe. Wow. That was close. So Campbell flies out to center for the second out of the inning. Huffman tags and advances, and Rochester now is a runner at third with two outs. Good throw by Schmiedlin. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was close. Did have the wind in his back, too, so that, that helped a little bit. That'll bring up the sophomore DH, Gavin Young. Good play by Lasik. That might have saved a run. Yeah, you've got to block those pitches in the dirt, and you've, you you want your your pitcher to feel confident that he can throw that breaking ball. Gavin Young, one for seven on the young season. He's one, hitting 143. He has one RBI. Strike, one and one. Runner third, two outs, bottom of the second, no score between the Eagles and the Zebras. These two teams met last year. It was 22 to 10. Call for Academy on that one. High, a ball, two and one. Gavin Young, kid who really came on at the end of last year as a freshman. Mm hmm. And had some big hits in that sectional. Popped up. Pitcher. Flanagan makes the call and the catch, and that retires the side. For Rochester in the second, no runs, no hits. One error and one left. At the end of two innings, Rochester 0 and Culver Academy 0. You're watching RTC TV 4. Welcome back here to Rochester High School, Bob Copeland Field, as we move into the top of the third. Still no runs for either team through two innings, and it's been kind of a, I would say a pitching duel, but the field has uh, done a lot of uh, work as well and been able to keep the sheet clean, Val. Yeah, um, Flanagan really uh, threw some good pitches in tough situations when he needed them that last inning. Did a nice job. 
and uh, you know Elliott's done a good job of keeping the ball in the infield as well. So yeah, that's what it should be like when two good teams play. Yeah. be Gerber, Schumacher, and Snedeker due for the Eagles here in the top of the third. Today is April 15th. That means it was 75 years ago today that Jackie Robinson made his Major League debut for the Dodgers. And I guess it would, it would make it about 25 years ago today that they basically retired the number 42 around baseball. In so is this the, the day everybody wears 42? Yep. And I think everybody... Even the teams that are playing on the road today, they'll the next time they play a home game, they'll wear 42. So it's everybody will wear 42 at one for at least one home game that pitches in the dirt. A little high and outside, two and zero. Mr. Screeden likes it when I give him some Cubs trivia. <laughs> there aren't many Cubs with famous birthdays on April 15th. It is Ted Sizemore's 77th birthday. But do people remember who Ted Sizemore was? He played for the Cubs in 1979. Yeah, yeah, but he's more famous for playing with the Cardinals. So and Today's Milton Bradley's birthday. He's one of the least popular Cubs ever. We would try to, try to ignore that he even played for the Cubs. So, yeah, not... Not a whole lot of guys. Two and two the count. Ground ball, third base. Reinerts throws. Huffman stays on the bag. He's out. One up, one down here in the top of the third. Now batting, number two, Trey Schumacher. That'll bring up the freshman right fielder, Trey Schumacher. Left-handed batter, and Schumacher takes inside. Swing and a miss. Elliott challenged him there with a fastball. On this date in 2019, the Cubs beat the Marlins 7-2 in Miami. Hugh Darvish got the win on the mound, and Wilson Contreras had a homer. One and two. Pitch. Good pitch. Popped up on the infield. Whew. Zink and McLaughlin almost collide, but Tarek comes down with it, and that's the second out of the inning. Yeah, lucky that uh, he didn't knock that out of Tarek's mitt. Yeah. Another good pitch by Elliott. Looked like a little off-speed pitch. He, 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 he had challenged him with a fastball, and he got Shoemaker's bat started up quick, er, quickly, and or Schumacher's bat up started quickly and, and threw the off-speed pitch. Okay, that'll bring up Roman Snedeker. Pitch is high. Snedeker grounded to third his first time up. Yeah, so far what the uh, Eagles have been able to do contact-wise has either been ground balls or, or weak pop-ups. I mean, hasn't really been hit too hard yet. Mm -hmm. In the dirt. I don't know what his pitch count is. It, it might be getting a little high, but uh been uh, pretty successful at getting the outs, though. Yeah. You don't really see a lot of first pitch swinging in high school baseball. Mm -hmm. Not that I've seen. And whether it's just a lot of young hitters who are trying to just look at some pitches or or what that is. We saw Reinerts yesterday just swing at the first pitch against Erickson and hit a line drive, but you, see a, you don't see a lot of that. Strike. I think there's probably a little bit of a concerted effort, too, from the coaching staff that they probably want to 
you know, see as many pitches as they can from a pitcher mm -hmm. in an inning. Oh, that gets by. Put in play, and it's in the left field. Runner at first with two outs. Not a lot uh, Tanner can do over there. I mean, that mm -hmm. was uh, well hit right down the line. First hit of the game for either team. And that allows Schmiedlin to bat with a man on base. Schmiedlin grounded to second his first time up. Grounder foul. One pitch, swing and a miss, throw to second, Ooh. safe, stolen base for Snedeker. That's a good throw by Jake, just a little bit uh, behind time-wise. Yeah, he. I mean, I think his, what do they call it, pop time, how quick he released the ball. I mean, he jumped out of his stance. I, th I think his release is a lot quicker. Just too good of a jump there by a Snedeker. And that is ripped on the right field line. Foul. 0 and 2. Yeah, you can see it with Connor Schmiedlin. He's a talented athlete. See why he hit 580 last year. And just as we say that, he <laughs> got him. Val, you got him again, I think. It's probably an 85% free throw shooter as well. <laughs> <laughs> Strikeout number two for Culver Academy in the third. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. At the end of two and a half innings, Rochester zero and Culver Academy zero, and you're watching RTC TV4. Back here, Rochester, Bob Copeland Field. After two and a half, the score remains 0-0. Zero, zero. The Eagles got their first hit of the game, but... Uh, really good job. Evan uh, Elliott has done a, a good job on the mound through three. Um, nice job getting that strike out there and kind of quashing what might have been a, a little bit of an opportunity for the Eagles. Yeah, I think it was a little bit of a high fastball again that he threw to yeah. Schmiedlin. It'll be Ferverta, McLaughlin, and Medina due for the Zebras in the bottom of the third. Oh, Mr. Screen, this isn't Cubs trivia, but this is baseball trivia that we, we might enjoy. On this date in 1968, the New York Mets were playing the Houston Astros at the Astrodome. Tom Seaver was on the mound for the Mets, and Don Wilson was on the mound for the Astros. The final score of the game was Houston 1, New York 0. And what made it interesting is the game took 24 innings. It is the longest scoreless tie in baseball history. It was 0-0 at the end of the 23rd inning. So that that's a bit of baseball trivia that, I mean, just seemed like a really exciting game to be at. The game took, the game took it only took six hours and six minutes, which when you think about it for 24 innings is pretty fast. But, yeah, can you imagine being at that game? If you hate offense, that game was for you. <laughs> First pitch of the inning to Faverda is high. A lot of free yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. The Mets used eight pitchers. The Astros only used five pitchers. A guy named Jim Ray for the Astros. He pitched seven innings in relief, and he had 11 strikeouts. Foul ball. Of course, 1968 was the year of the pitcher. That was the year that Denny McLean won 31 games. That's still the last 30-game winner in baseball. That'll be the last 30-game winner we'll, we might ever have. It's pretty shocking when any, any, somebody wins 20 these days. Foul ball, Lisa can't get there. 2-2 two two the count. Right, Mickey Lolich. Yeah, had a good year. That was the year uh, Bob Gibson had a 1.12 ERA in 1968.
Got him looking with a breaking ball. Just froze Faverda. Strikeout number th uh, three. Excuse me. Strikeout number four for Flanagan. So four strikeouts the first time through the order. Let's see what kind of adjustments the Zebras make with Tarek McLaughlin. Tarek is 0 for 1. Tried to bunt his way on. Got thrown out by Flanagan. Pitch is high and outside. Yeah, we're in the era now where you get taken out in the seventh inning when you're mm -hmm. throwing a perfect game. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's crazy. High, a ball. One to zero in 24 innings. I can't imagine what that game was like. I guess I can't imagine what it was like, but I... Two and one. Hmm. Outside. Ball three. Good eye by Tarek. Yeah. Inside, that's a base on balls. Runner at first with one out, and let's see if Tarek's on the move here. Now batting, number 18, Ethan Medina. Again, you've got a senior catcher in LASIK who's and a senior pitcher, so let's see how they control the running game. Ethan Medina struck out his first time up. Pitch is high. Lasik jumps out of a stance, but McLaughlin wasn't moving. The yeah, clouds are looking really ominous right now. Those, sure are the, those are the worst type of clouds. Yeah. The uh, ominous ones. Yeah. McLaughlin on the move, and Ethan swings away and fouls it off. I wonder if that was the hit and run. You know, the thing about the hit and run is in high school baseball, you, there aren't, just aren't that many double play sets. You don't have to worry about getting out of the – Oh, good move, and now Tarek is caught, and he's caught in a rundown, and they miss the tag, and Tarek gets back. Well, that was a heck of a move. Tarek was leaning, and he got frozen in his tracks, but he was able to avoid the tag. This is the usual was the inner outside of the baseline argument. The umpires are going to talk about him. Again, it's, it's tough when you only have two umpires. The home plate umpire's got to hustle over and try to get in position to see to see what's going on. I think the base umpire had a good look, but it, it's just for the home plate umpire to get a good angle on whether there was a tag or not. Mm-hmm. They're going to stay with the call mm -hmm. that was originally made, so Tarek stays on first. Now, if it were a postseason game where you have three umpires, I think that would be a, it would be easier for the umpires. Mm -hmm. Kind of one and one on Medina. Inside. 
But again, yeah, you talk to most coaches and say, yeah, we'd love to get a base hit in the. If you put on the hit and run, yeah, we'd love to get a base hit in the vacated hole and put runners on first and third. But a lot of times it's just, hey, we just want to stay out of the double play. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, then then you you're fine with that usually. Foul ball. And when you're talking about a hitter like Medina who struck out his first time, maybe you should force him to shorten up his stroke and get, get his bat on the ball. But again, Ethan doesn't strike out a whole lot. Throw over to Gerber. And McLaughlin is back. Pitch is low. Tarek's on the go. The throw to second. Not in time. Stolen base for McLaughlin. Pitch was a ball. Count is 3-2. and two. Tarek pitched a good pitch to run on. It was kind of like a breaking ball, like a slider. And that gave Tarek enough time. Pitch is just high, base on balls. First and second with one out. Now batting pitcher, Evan Elliott. That'll bring up Evan Elliott. Been struck out but reached on an error his first time up. So Culver Academy has committed two errors so far in this game, and then they had that rundown play in this inning, which was not an error, but... You call that a kind of a team error, a defensive miscue. So mm -hmm. let's see if the Zebras can make him pay for it here. 0 and 1 the count. Elliot Bunce fouls it off. 0 and 2. Flanagan looks back. McLaughlin. McLaughlin's on the go. And the pitch is dropped. Double steal. Pitch is a ball. So the count is one and two. You had Grunberg kind of moving in behind McLaughlin and kind of playing patty cake, but. Tarek timed it well. Got him. And the ball was not caught. The ball was not caught. The ball was not caught. LASIK looks back and then throws to first for the out. Two down. So once he... I thought once he went that far off of the... He kind of gave himself up off of that, and then he still. Uh, well, the umpire kept saying, making the safe signal, and that the ball had hit the ground. So, yeah. Yeah. Now, is that considered out of the base? I mean, if it, once he takes a step into the dugout, it's. Yeah. Then you're giving yourself up, but I. You're still in the field, so he said, no, it's still a live ball. Pitch is low. So I think LASIK was trying to show to the umpire, no, I caught it, I caught it. And mm -hmm. so he was kind of, wait, what's going on here? And then he was worried about Tarek. But it all worked out in the end for the Eagles. Strike called, one and one. Now, if this were like a, a big conference game or sectional game, maybe would Culver Academy think about walking Reinerts. But again... Maybe they don't know much about this young freshman. But he is 7 for 11 on the season. Swing and a miss. 
That's a big rip. Yeah. But if Reinhardt keeps hitting the way he's been hitting, he's going to get walked, and they're going to make Huffman beat him. No score, bottom of the third, Rochester and Culver Academy. Two-two pitch from Flanagan. Ground ball, third base, fielded on the short hop. And the throw to first is in time to retire the side. Nice job by the freshman, Fumich, to handle the short hop. Flanagan gets out of trouble. No runs, no hits. No errors, two left. At the end of three innings, no score between Rochester and Culver Academy. You're watching RTC TV4. Back here, moving into the top of the fourth. Still no score, but it seems like we're inching ever so much closer every inning, and Zebra's left two on in scoring position in the uh, bottom of the third, Val. And, but uh, the Eagles able to uh, to get the job done and get out of the inning. Yeah, nice job to get Reiners to hit the ball on the ground. Softball update, Rochester leads Culver 12-1, to bottom of the fourth. Over at Fansler. Grunberg, Lasik, and McGee do for the Eagles here against Elliott. Yeah, it's starting to rain a little bit. Thinking about Jackie Robinson, what was amazing is how many people saw that movie 42, which yeah. came out. I mean, that was even, like, young kids wanted to see that movie. And that, w that was so awesome about, you know, the legacy of Jackie Robinson. The people, you know, they came, that movie came out in 2013, but I remember it well about how popular that movie was. And so sad that we lost Chadwick Boseman at such a young age, but his performance was so great in that. And Jackie Robinson's widow, Rachel, is still alive. I think, I want to say 97 or 98 years old. Wow. Fouled off. Rachel Robinson is 99 years old. Wow. She'll turn 100 in July. Pitch is high. Grunberg grounded back to the mound his first time up. Up and in. I've told the I've been told that the Negro Leagues Museum in Kansas City is a must must visit place. Yeah. So, yeah, I want to make it there, and I want to make it to Cooperstown. There was Ball a team um, in South Bend, wasn't there? They played in the Negro Leagues. Am I, am I right with that or wrong with that? I don't know. And there was a team out of Indianapolis. Was it the Clowns? Yeah. Okay, that's who I was thinking of. Walk, yeah. Oscar Charleston, I know Joe Posnanski wrote in his uh, Baseball 100 book that was a bestseller, just came out a few months ago. I think he had Oscar Charleston ranked number five all time. Wow. Whereas Oscar, not only one of the great Negro League stars, but he was from Indianapolis. That'll bring up the catcher, Colin Lasick. He walked his first time up. Throw over. Grunberg back. One one.
mentioned that the, uh, the uh, sport classifications came out for the fall and winter sports earlier this week. We talked about that on Talking Sports earlier, but for uh, softball and baseball, it's going to come out in August. Mm-hmm. And usually it just comes out in one fell swoop. They'll announce classes and sectionals all at the same time. Of course, our minds will be halfway into football by then, but that'll, that'll be interesting to find out. Rochester's uh, that one in the dirt. Baseball is the same as basketball, right? Four classes. Yeah. Got him looking. Breaking ball. Good pitch. Outside corner. Strikeout number three for Elliott. That'll bring up the sophomore left fielder, Beck McGee. McGee laid down a sacrifice bun his first time. All's that went off, 0-1-1. Four of the six teams in Rochester's baseball sectional are in the TRC, Rochester, Wabash, Manchester, and Whitco. We got Lewis Cass and Carroll from outside the TRC. Five of the six teams in Rochester softball section are in the TRC. Strike. Rochester Valley, Wabash, Manchester, and Whitco. And Lewis Cass from outside. High. Where does Carroll softball go? Did that, didn't you? <laughs> I was just curious. I mean, if the softball or the baseball goes to the, I was wondering why the. I mean, they're still in two A, right? There goes the runner. The throw is not in time. Stolen base for Grunberg. Low, ball three. Full count pitch. Challenge him, and he fouls it off. Spring is the time of the year where we really appreciate John Harrell all the much, uh, all the much more, much more, that much more mm -hmm. in the fall and winter when we don't have his website. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pitch. Got him looking with a breaking ball. Strikeout number four. He froze him with a breaking ball. I don't think... I think McGee was looking for the heat, and yeah, he you thought that was a fastball that was going to be in head high. I'm going to go to first base, and I was like, whoops. Dropped it right in there. It was a nice pitch. First pitch is high to the DH, Jack Quigg. All right. Carroll is not even in Class 2A. They're in Class 1A for softball. Okay. I was wondering. The they're, yeah. in the, they're in a section with Clinton Central, Frontier, Rossville, Sheridan, South Newton, Tri-County. Okay. I was wondering if that might be the, the reason why they're not in the same with Rochester. Yeah. Quig asks for time, and he gets it. And Rossville moving down from 2A to 1A for for basketball. Volleyball, of course, they made it to a 2A regional final in boys' basketball back in 2021. Mm -hmm. Low 3 0. I want to say Rossville's probably teetered back and forth between 1A and 2A for a while. Yeah. Co Coach Corey Dunn does a very good job there with her boys' program. Three-o pitch. Way high, base on balls.
second walk of the inning. Third walk of the game. And they'll bring up the freshman third baseman, Nick Fumich. Fumich grounded back to the mound his first time up. Fastball high. And we we do not keep pitch counts up here in the press box. And I'm curious to know if how strong Elliot's feeling right now. Inside, two and zero. Oh. Fouled off. Too much aggressive and heading the count two and zero. Oh. Now it's two and one. Two one. Fouled off. Two and two. The last five batters are going strikeout, walk, strikeout, strikeout, walk. <coughs> so again, we, it just seems like we've seen a lot of deep counts this year. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was at that Delphi game. That game took about two hours and forty-five minutes. Two hours and fifty minutes. And just a lot of deep counts in that game. Not many one, two, three innings. A lot of that went in the dirt. Skips by Cipher. Runners advance. It's a wild pitch. Jake doesn't let much get by him. There wasn't a whole lot he could do there. That that kind of hit well in front of him, and it yeah. looked like it kind of took a, a right turn or left turn from our vantage point Yeah. when it hit. So it's a big pitch. 2-2 two pitch. Foul ball. Didn't get much of it, but got a piece. Three two. Grounder left side. Nice pick by McLaughlin. Throw. Got him. Wow. That was nice. That was a good play there from uh, deep in the hole there by Tarek. I mean, that was kind of an off-balance throw, and it was right on the money mm -hmm. for Culver Academy in the fourth. No runs, no hits, no errors, two left. At the end of three and a half, no score between Rochester and Culver Academy. You're watching RTC TV4. Welcome back here to Rochester High School, Bob Copeland Field, and the Academy was threatening, Bal, and Evan was able to uh, get the ground out with uh, runners at second and third. Get out of that inning. Great play there by Tarek. Yeah. The softball final score, Rochester has defeated Culver 13-2 in five innings. Yeah, Mr. Screeton said he's been to the Negro Leagues Museum. He says it's great. He says he can't have not enough time. And, and they, that and I've heard some good barbecue places in Kansas City, so that's <laughs> It'll be worth a trip. Huffman, Zink, and Campbell do for the Zebras here in the bottom of the fourth. Aaron Huffman walked his first time up. He's the... I'm getting the third base. We're being stranded there. Zebras do not have a hit through the first three innings off Flanagan. They have had four base runners including three on walks. Flanagan has fanned five. Just high. Lacey tried to frame that with his, can I say, LASIK vision? <laughs> you can say it. You just did. <laughs> Low. 2-0. Oh. Kind of fisted a little looping liner. Gets past Flanagan. Grunberg throws. Nice play. Another nice play by a shortstop on this field. 
That might have been even better than the McLaughlin play because he had to charge in and barehand it. One up, one down. That'll bring up second baseman Braden Zink. Braden struck out his first time up. Lining and got him on a really nice breaking ball. Swing and a miss. Low and outside, one on one. Oh, it hit him in the head. Oh. That's why he got a helmet on. Oh. Ooh. Just startling. I mean, Braden seems to be okay. Now batting right fielder Hunter. Well, oh, the helmet did its job. The umpires. Checking him out. I think it. I, I'm curious to know if there's kind of a rule. I know in football, the uh, football official can take you out of a game for a play if he sees that you suffered a head injury. But I don't know if the umpires can do anything. In a, uh, uh, something similar, obviously, if, if it take you out of a game. That I would think they so probably have uh, ultimate authority on something yeah, like that. Yeah, but re-entering a game and again for football you can just maybe go out for a play and then come back in but I, different for they can refer you to the trainer but I, Braden's okay I want to know those count throw back to first safe Lanning has walked three and hit a batter so far Campbell flew out to center his first time up Lofted in the air, shallow right. Caught by the second baseman, Snedeker. Campbell's the second out of the inning. Zink holds on. That'll bring up the DH, Gavin Young. Gavin popped up to the pitcher his first time up. Breaking ball. Just high. <laughs> Throw over. Zinc scrambles back. Ball ball. Been a great year at Culver Academy for sports, winning sectionals in both girls basketball and boys basketball. Great winner. Been uh, been quite a while on the girls' side since they had won a sectional. Yeah, I think I was at that one when they won a sectional. And they won, they beat Rochester at Rochester in overtime. I think I was at that game. I think that was the last one. And it's, it's not easy there just because they lose some athletes to hockey, especially on the boys' side. Swing and a miss. And not only that, but they've got strong, I mean, their they're girls' and boys' swimming teams won sectionals as well. Right. And I think that's the first time in school history that they had ever done that, which is surprising. Yeah. Well, you don't, you don't know really. Fly ball to left. And it's caught out there to retire the side. Beck McGee out there in left field to make the catch for Rochester in the bottom of the fourth. No runs, no hits, no errors, one left. At the end of four innings, no score between Rochester and Culver Academy. You're watching RTC TV4. All right, back here at Bob Copeland after four. Still 0-0 zero, zero between the Culver Academy Eagles and Rochester Zebras. And... Uh, the defense has been the name of the game here so far, Val. Yeah, some good defensive players by both teams. Some good clutch pitching, clutch pitches by both pitchers. We have a scoreless game here in the fifth. It'll be 8-9-1 and one due for the Eagles here in the top of the fifth. Gerber, Schumacher, and Snedeker. One 
One hit for Culver Academy, no hits for the Zebras, so only one hit combined between the two teams. Yeah. Mr. S Mr. Screeden just informed us that Hank Aaron is a former Indianapolis clown. Yeah. There's some really good baseball history in, in Indiana, despite mm -hmm. not having a uh, MLB team here. Just high on the first pitch to Gerber. Line drive to left, hit well. Ferber can't get it, and it's going to roll deep. Should be extra bases. Running first and on his way into second is Evan Gerber with a leadoff double. That ball was smoked. Now batting, right fielder. Only the second hit of the game, the first extra base hit. That'll bring up the freshman right fielder, Trey Schumacher, and let's see. Uh, Jake Seifer just made a signal to the infield. You've got to be aware of the possibility of a bunt. McLaughlin is holding him close. First pitch is low for a ball. Schumacher did not show bunt there. Ball two. Schumacher not laid down a sacrifice bun according prior to today according to the stats that I have, so strike. And the pitch. Lofted to right. Hit pretty well. Toward the line. Did he catch it? He did. Campbell tagging up and advancing. It is Schumacher. Rochester appealed. But he did not leave early. So Schumacher gets the job done, and then he moves the runner up. That was a nice play in right field by Hunter Campbell to track that one down. Runner at third with one out for Roman Snedeker. Snedeker is grounded to third and singled, one for two. Strike. This is a big out. If you can get a strikeout or a keep the run from scoring, maybe you can pitch around Schmiedlin, who's on deck. Grounder, past Elliott, backhanded by Zink, throw to first. Got him. Wow. On the play, Gerber scores, but that was a nice play by Zink, who had a range far to his right. So an RBI ground out for Snedeker, and Culver Academy takes a 1-0 lead. Now batting center fielder, Connor Schmiedlin. So Schmiedlin bats with nobody on and two out now. He is grounded to second. He struck out. Strike. Swing and a miss. Shmila looks like he's struggling with his timing a little bit against Evan, and I don't know if there's a little bit of deception there or what, but he's done a good job. Hold off.
That one was just slow. I don't know if that was like a straight change or what that was. I don't know if it was just took a little bit off his breaking ball. <laughs> Got him again. And that retires the side. Strikeout number five for Culver Academy in the fifth. They score one. One hit, no errors, nobody left. At the end of four and a half innings, it's Culver Academy one and Rochester zero. You're watching RTC TV four. Moving into the bottom of the fifth here at Bob Copeland Field, the Eagles strike first to get on the board. Lead one zero. Evan Elliott has uh, done a really good job on the mound for the Rochester Zebras. They just uh, they need to get something going. Yeah, especially here after on giving up, a, especially after giving up a leadoff double last inning. That he, he he did a nice job. I know he gave up a run, but I think that was nice. And you know they've they've done a, a good job too, helping him on on the defensive side of things. They just need to get their bats going here. The Eagles, on the other hand, have. Uh, Really done a, a nice job of uh, preventing Rochester from getting a whole lot going on the offensive end. New pitcher for Culver Academy coming in. He's a junior, Charles Boardman. So Flanagan's day is done. And he'll face Fervor to McLaughlin and Medina here in the bottom of the fifth. So Flanagan won four innings, allowed no hits, no runs. He walked three, he hit a batter, and he struck out five. Boardman, a junior right-hander. Well, outside. But Colton Furrida is a good-looking athlete. He's he's a lot bigger and stronger than I remember when we, we were there for picture day. He's looking forward to seeing him in the football field in the fall. 2-0. And in three and zero. Fervor to struck out looking back in the third inning. There's only a previous at bat. Mm. Outside corner, three and one. But even on three and zero, facing the number nine batter, Boardman didn't seem to want to just throw one right down the middle. Offer like a change up on three and one. Yeah. Swing and a miss, three and two. Base on balls. Well, that was a good at bat. Fervita got a chance to uh, see a lot of pitches, and the other uh, Rochester Zebras got a chance to see. Yeah. Several pitches as well, so yeah, kind of. A, that's what they call the number nine batter, the second leadoff man. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was that was a that was a good example of it there. Tarek McLaughlin, the batter. Tarek has grounded back to the pitcher, trying to bunt his way on for a hit, and then walked. So 0 for one. High. Fervor is Rochester's sixth base runner in the game, but they still don't have a hit. Whoa. Lasik can't handle that, and that's going to be a stolen base for Colton Fervita. Runner at second, nobody out, and McLaughlin ahead in the count 2-0. Oh. 
Eric always talks about he loves these pressure situations. Fouled off, 2-1. and one. And you know he's going to hit the ball where it's pitched, too. He's not going to. Now, having said that, you probably want to pull a grounder to the right side and at least move the runner over at the very, very least. Yeah, you, you can see, you know, on the basketball floor or on the baseball yeah. field, he's not afraid of these situations. Right. Now, I'm, I'm curious to know what Tarek is thinking because and that pitch is high, so the count's 3-1. and one. You've got the second baseman, Snedeker, playing where the second baseman usually plays. But you've got the shortstop, Grunberg, who's kind of getting in behind Fervor. To, is, he, is Tarek thinking about hitting that hole on the left side, that 5-6 hole? Right. High base on balls. So Boardman's come in, and he struggled with his control. As, he's, as he has walked the first two batters he has faced, and first and second nobody out. And now this is – now he's really got to roll up his sleeves because he got Medina, Elliott, and Reinhardt's due up. One nothing Culver Academy here in the bottom of the fifth. Medina has struck out and walked. Pitches inside the throw to third. Safe. Runners at first and third with nobody out. I'd be curious to know if that was a sign or that Fraverta did that on his own. Because McLaughlin was not running. Right. It wasn't a double so steal, it was not yeah. a, It was not a double steal. So I think that might have been. He saw something there where he thought he could get there, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Pitch is high. There goes McLaughlin. Throws back to third. Fervor to safe there. And Rochester now has runners at second and third with nobody out. So I don't think Lasik was even thinking about Tarek there. He mm -hmm. was he knew if he threw threw down, he'd risk Fervor to coming home, so he just threw back to third. Count is 2 0 to Ethan Medina. Ball, Col breaking ball. I think Colton kind of uh forced his hand a little bit too with the with the lead that he had it kind of made him go mm -hmm. back to third because he knew that uh, if, if he did go to second he was probably going to get a run across mm -hmm. infielders probably play, e playing even with the bag not playing in but even with the bag ground or foul it's good rip 3-0 green light And so if, if Ethan hits a sharp grounder at somebody, the, I, mean, I would imagine the throw is going home, even though there, even though you can't get the force. Nice. Fly ball to right. It pretty well. Caught. The throw hits the cutoff, man. No throw to the plate. Throw to third, safe. Sacrifice fly for Ethan Medina, and this game is tied 1-1. Evan Elliott. It seemed like the wind kind of pushed that ball in a little bit. Schumacher made the catch, but he kind of didn't have a whole lot of momentum going into the throw. He hit the cutoff man. Mm -hmm. I was asking a lot to hit the cutoff man, and then hope the cutoff man would throw home as a turn at the cutoff man. Gerber went out throwing the third. Line drive to left. Foul Ooh. ball. 0 1 1. Zebra's still looking for their first hit of the game. Yep. Again, infielders playing even with the bag, all four infielders. Schumacher's playing pretty deep out in right field and toward the line. Elliott fouls that one off. Couple nice rips just way ahead there for Evan. Evan came in tied for the team lead in RBIs with five. He's 0 for 2 with two strikeouts so far. 
in the dirt one and two. Yeah, I was I was telling I was talking about this yesterday, but Evans kind of like um, Evans was just very philosophical on how you deal with. He goes, baseball is a game of failure because I asked him about. I think when he hit that home run against Delphi, I think it was his first at bat after he'd struck out his previous at bat. He goes, just baseball is a game of failure, and you have to deal with it. Mm-hmm. Got him swinging. Two down, strikeout number one for Boardman. Even the even the pros, I mean, your your best pros, three and a half uh, out of ten times mm-hmm. get a hit, you know. So mm-hmm. that'll bring up Reinerts. He has lined a second and grounded a third. Inside. Line straight back toward us. I don't know why I flinched. <laughs> With a lot of freshmen, you worry, oh, he's gonna, he's gonna get kind of jumpy up in there in the box and swing at anything. But I, I'm not, I don't feel that way about Tanner. Hmm. Having watched him play so far, I think he's gonna. I don't think the situation is gonna change his approach too much. Popped up. Should retire the side. Boardman. Oh, oh he misses the ball. He misses the ball. That's an E1, and McLaughlin scores to give Rochester the lead. A two-out error on the pitcher. It was right at the mound. And and I think he he's trying to measure, and then he has to take a step up, moving, moving backwards, and I think it affects his vision just a little bit, and it just dropped over his head. Two one Rochester. The mound meeting, and I'm kind of wondering if that's the coach saying, "Hey, let the infielders take charge." Or I don't know. He's pretty animated out there. He's. All right, runner at first with two outs for Aaron Huffman. Well, the Zebras lead 2-1. They still don't have a hit, but uh, they have the lead. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Three errors by Culver Academy in this game. Go to first. Gerber just interested in catching it. One one. I suppose you know. I'm sure it happens in high school baseball, but to to win a game with no hits, probably not a over the common thing. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think Corey Good got his team together and said, <laughs> <laughs> "Let's go out there and and win this one with no hits." Yeah, that'll really show them. <laughs> But if they do, I'm sure he's not going to say, you guys can have this W. Yeah, he's not going to throw the fish back in the water. Right. Fouled off 0-2. In the dirt, Lasik can't block it. It'll be a wild pitch as Reinerts advances. Reiner at second with two outs. Let's see what Boardman wanted to do. He wanted to see if Huffman would offer it a pitch outside the zone. It was a little too far outside. The one two. High. Two two.
But this is great because either these are the type of games you're going to be playing once you get to conference and sectional play. Mm -hmm. It has that kind of feel to it. Where every base matters, every batter matters. Foul ball, foul ball. Count hangs at two and two. Boardman, out of the stretch, throws. Foul ball. Two two from Boardman to Huffman. Got him. Foul tip held on to by the catcher Lasik. That retires the side, but Rochester scores two runs on no hits. One error and one left. At the end of five innings, Rochester leads Culver Academy 2-1. to one. You're watching RTC TV4. Back here at Bob Copeland Field after five, Rochester leads for the first time 2-1. to one. Still don't have a hit, Val, but they have the lead. Mm-hmm. And it's been, again, Rochester's played better defense in this game, and we talk about we talk about defense so much. That's why, or at least I talk about defense a lot, especially in high school baseball, just the value of just being able to put the ball in play. And really, you know, Boardman did a nice job. I mean, he had second and third, nobody out, Medina, Elliott, and Reinhardt's do up. And then he really did well. Yeah. But but the air. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, Tanner knew that he was out, and mm -hmm. everybody knew that he was out, and he just <laughs> mm -hmm. everything but the catch. And yep. So it'll be Grunberg, Lasik, and McGee due for Culver Academy here in the top of the sixth, and now – it was kind of the side benefit. The last out in the fifth inning was Schmiedlin, their best hitter. Right. So you, you can possibly get away with not having to face Schmiedlin the rest of this game if you if you get the job done. But it's not like he's their only good hitter. And this guy is tough as well, Grunberg. Grunberg, a junior. Off the helmet on one hop of Jake Cipher. I don't know what they make these helmets out of, but they need to make airplanes out of them. Yeah. Rocket ships. Just bouncing off. The zebras are just like, no, oh, whatever. Fly ball. Center field. Medina makes the call on the catch. One up, one down. Elliott has retired four in a row. Never in this game has Culver Academy had two consecutive batters reach base. And only once in this game have they had two men on base at the same time. You had to say it. Low and outside, ball one. We'll see how, uh, how good your curse is. Yeah. Whoa. Oof. That got away a little know. bit, yeah. Did I mention Evan Elliott had two big free throws against Wabash? Not lately, yeah, no. Okay. So I'll just I'll just throw all the curses in there at once. <laughs> <laughs> well if you can get him to miss a free throw tonight, you've really got <laughs> a a bad curse. <laughs> Three and zero to LASIK. Ball four. Well, you're halfway there. Four walks for Elliott to go with five strikeouts. 
And that'll bring up the left fielder, Beck McGee. McGee's laid on a sacrifice bun, and he struck out looking. Low. Ooh, yeah, went Swing around. And miss. Yeah, one on one. Fall off, got in on his hands there. McGee only a sophomore, but he hits in the five spot in this good lineup. Came in four for eight on the season. Nice block. There goes LASIK. The throw is not in time. For a catcher, LASIK runs very well. They don't courtesy run for him. Jake kind of had to double clutch, get that ball out of his mitt. Yeah, it was a great pitch to run. Yeah. And it is a stolen base for LASIK. Runner at second, one out. The 2-2 pitch. Ball three. Gets away. Wild pitch. LASIK advances to third. Now the tying runs at third with one out. Infield, not playing in, but playing the bag, same depth, foul ball. Tarek is, uh, Tarek is kind of in on the grass a little bit. Three and two. Foul ball. Three-two. High base on balls. Second walk in a row. You did it. Yep. <laughs> Two runners in a row. And we're gonna have a pitching change. Now batting, DH Jack Quinn. So Elliott is done after five and a third innings. And it looks like Medina is going to come in and pitch. Now pitching for the Zebras, Ethan Medina. Evan Elliott moves into center field.
Ethan Medina on the mound for Rochester. He threw two scoreless innings against Plymouth on Tuesday, and he got the save in that game. So he's used to coming in in relief. And, I mean, he had you know, he had a two-run margin to work with in that game. He's only got a one-run margin to work with here. But I think Ethan's – I mean, I think he knows what he's in for here. It's not the first time he's been on the mound where he's got to come in and throw strikes and get outs quickly. Yeah. And one thing I know about Ethan – is that he has about the best pickoff move of any high school pitcher I've ever seen, so Beck McGee's got to be really careful over there at first base. And again, you, you, McGee's only a sophomore. I'm not sure he's seen Medina much. Throw over. I mean... Rounder left side, base oh. hit. Run will score to tie the game. RBI single for Jack Quigg. And this game is tied 2-2. Runners at first and second with one out. So Evan Elliott can't get the win today. And that'll bring up third baseman Nick Fumich. He's grounded to the pitcher and grounded to short. McLaughlin had to make a really nice play in a short hop to get him at first back in the fourth the last time he batted. Oh and one. In the dirt. Boy, nice hitting by Jack Quigg. Yeah. Because you're facing a lefty. You haven't seen him probably in your life before, and you slash a base hit. Culver Academy's third hit of the game. In the dirt, nice block by Cypher. Yeah, that was a big hit and a big spot, and... Line drive, base hit left field. Running third is McGee. He'll hold. They don't hit the cutoff, man. Just the, past the glove of Tarek. Yeah, but the bases will stay loaded. That'll bring up Evan Gerber. Gerber ripped a double his last time up. He's one for two. Grounded to third his first time up. Pitch. Low. I'm not sure what that pitch was. If that was kind of like a change up or a, maybe like a backdoor breaking ball. But Gerber in the head in the count one and oh. Really needs a strikeout here. And he gets one. He gets a strike at least, one and one. And this has been a heck of a game. It's been out here for almost what, an hour and 55 minutes, but it's been just a well-played game. That pitch is inside, two and one. Strike. Well, I'm not sure what that pitch was, but that was a good one. I don't know, maybe like a breaking ball in on his hands or something. Kind of, kind of tied up Gerber. He didn't know what to do. Two two. Mm. Hit him with a pitch. And Culver Academy takes the lead. RBI hit by pitch for Evan Gerber. Culver Academy now leads 3-2. Bases loaded with one out for Schumacher. Outside. Medina lost his hat there. Now batting, 
Schumacher. Schumacher's popped short. And he flew out to right field. Hunter Campbell made a really nice catch. Last time up. Ball two. Fouled off, two and one. Might want to tighten that hat up a little bit. Yeah. Feels like a really big situation in the game now. Popped up. Infield fly roll. Medina makes the catch. Runners hold. Two outs. Get one more here. Keep themselves in the game. Now hitting second baseman, Roman Snedeker. We handled our first infield fly rule of the season without incident. <laughs> A great moment in broadcasting history. All right, Roman Snedeker, the batter. That was that was here, wasn't it? Last that was year? here against Carroll, and that was just chaos. Yeah. It was, then it wasn't, then it was, and it wasn't. Yeah. Snedeker is one for three. He's grounded to third. He's singled. And last time up, he drove in a run with a ground with a ground out to second base. Hit in the air. Foul. Is it playable? No. No. One and one. Breaking ball. It's ball two. Big big potential out here. They're, they've turned the they've turned their batting order over again. This is one of their best hitters in Snedeker. Popped up foul. Can Cipher get there? He does, and that retires the side. Cypher almost ran into the umpire. They need to locate the ball, and then he finally ran it down. A lot happened that inning, but Culver Academy scores two runs, two hits, no errors, and they leave the bases loaded. At the end of five and a half innings, Culver Academy leads Rochester 3-2. to two. You're watching RTC TV 4. Welcome back here, Bob Copeland Field. Just like that, the Zebras find themselves back down by one. Three to two as we move into the bottom of the sixth. Still looking for their first hit here, Val. We need to do the reverse reverse jinx on them. Give them a give them a couple hits here in the bottom. See if they can't get something going. Yeah, and, and I'll be curious to see where Boardman's confidence level is at because he really got out. Of, I mean, even though Rochester scored two runs last inning, he really did a nice job of kind of kind of limiting the damage. And now he, you know, he's got six, seven, eight in the batting order due up with Zink, Campbell, and Young. So let's see how he handles that. But uh, kudos to Ethan Medina. I think he worked his way out of some trouble there. I mm -hmm. mean, to, you know, boy, I mean, you give up a hit batter with the bases loaded, but then you get Schumacher and a pop up and Snedeker and a foul out. I mean, you don't like being down going into the bottom of the sixth, but it could be a lot worse than three to two. Oh, for sure. I mean, Snedeker, you know, he was six for 11 on the season coming into that at bat. Now he's six for 12. First pitch, low, about a 55-footer. Zink ahead in the count, 1-0. Oh. Zink has struck out, and he was hit by a pitch in the head his last time up. Yep. So 
talking with Braden about his pitching yesterday. He said he throws a knuckleball. He yeah. said the knuckleball was just perfect for the win yesterday because the <laughs> win was just doing, playing all sorts of tricks with his knuckleball. When was the last time you talked to a high school pitcher that had a knuckleball? No. Two and one. That, then you have a knuckleball kind of mixed in with the regular repertoire. Mm-hmm. Swing and a miss, two and one. A lot of times your knuckleballers don't have a whole lot of other pitches. Right, yeah. yeah. Two and one. Outside. Braden Zink, also the number one singles player on the tennis team. I think we talked about that yesterday. Mm-hmm. All back. Three, two. Base on balls. Lead off walk here in the sixth. Good start for the Zebras. Again, baseball is just not the game it was 10, 20 years ago. The idea of throwing a 3-2 breaking ball hmm. with a one-run lead in the sixth inning and nobody on base to the number of six batter in your opposing in your, in your opponent's lineup, it just didn't happen very often. But everything Boardman throws seems to wiggle. Pitch running in first will be Landon Bumford. Bumford pitch running, pinch running at first. Hunter Campbell has flown out to center and popped a second. Pitch is high. The 1-0. Shows bunt, throw to second, not in time. Stolen base for Bumford. Campbell offered, so the count is one and one. That's a strike. I would imagine the bunt sign stays on here. Gerber way in at first base. Fumich kind of even with the bag at third. Ball two. Somebody told Hunter, don't smile up there too much up there, kid. Hmm. It was funny when a 16-year-old calls another 16-year-old kid. But in play, fair ball. Throws to third, back, safe. That was crazy. Gerber, even though Campbell was coming down the line, he decided to throw to third. I think we're going to have to, as an official scorer, we're going to have to make a call on that one. I think it's a base hit. And I think that is the Zebra's first hit. I mean, yeah. it's not a fielder's choice. Bumford overran the bag, but he was able to get back there and avoid Fumich's tag. First and third, nobody out, and Gavin Young's the batter. Zebra's trail, 3-2, bottom of the sixth. It gets by LASIK. Here comes Bumford, safe to tie the game. Landon Bumford's speed making a big impact. I think we're going to call that a wild pitch. 
I, I but I think LASIK would like to have that one back at the same time. I think he kind of got through the five hole. Boy, I don't know. You want him? Or make, that, boy, that, look that at the replay. Like a, it might have been like, a pass ball. Yeah, that looked like one that should have been caught. Yeah, we're going to change that to a pass ball. Runner at second, nobody out. The count is 2-0 and to Gavin Young. Gavin has popped to the pitcher and flown out to left. Got to move that runner over here. We're tied 3-3. Strike. Boy, things were looking kind of bleak about 5, 10 minutes ago. It was 3-2, and they had bases loaded with one out, but Medina yeah. pitched out of the jam, and all of a sudden we're tied, and the Zebras have the potential go-ahead run in scoring position. No outs. He pulls it foul. Again, I, I don't think a bunt here, I, I'm not. A, I'm never a big fan of bunting with your number eight hitter to get to your number nine hitter. Right. I'd, I'd like to see Gavin, if he's going to move the runner, you know, hit a ground ball to the right side. Snedeker was moving over, now he moves back to his regular spot. That one's fouled back, two and two. Generally speaking, I don't like bunting with your number eight hitter to get to your number nine hitter. In specifically here, I don't like because I just think Col Gavin Young's a good hitter. Mm -hmm. I don't want him to give himself up. I want him to see him swing here. Grounder up the middle by Boardman. Throw to first. Dropped by it. By Grunberg. He dropped it. Uh, Did he have out, it long enough? Out is the call. Okay. On the transfer is when he dropped it. So okay. he held on to it long enough. On the play, Campbell moves to third, runner at third, one out, and Colton Ferverda is the batter. Ferverda is 0 for 1 with a run score. He struck out and walked. Swing and a miss at a breaking ball. Good arm action by Boardman. That one, that one really dropped away. Yeah. Infield in. Grunberg definitely has a shortstop's arm. Snedeker playing in. Grunberg in on the grass. Fumich. And now Fumich looks like he'll take a step back. 0-2 the count. Fervor is really going to compete now. He's got to scratch and claw and get that ball in play, ideally. The 0-2. Hi, that was actually a fastball it looked like. Kind of a waste pitch, see if Fervor would chase. He didn't. Mm -hmm. And the count is one and two. And Colton had that big double against Delphi. Got him swinging on a breaking ball. Strike out number three for Boardman. Runner at third with two outs for Tarek McLaughlin. Tarek has grounded back to the pitcher in a bunt attempt, and then he's walked twice. 0 for 1 with a run scored. Line drive, left center field. It'll drop for a hit. Zebras take the lead. It's going to roll all the way to the wall for extra bases. Tarek rounding second. He will hold with an RBI double. Zebras take the lead 4-3. to three. Tarek just did a dance that I would like to see explained. <laughs> Tarek pumped up. Just two hits all game, but the center field, I think, was shaded, kind of expecting Tarek to pull, and that he had no chance of that one. That went rolled for a while. Zebras lead 4-3. to three. Let's bring up the pitcher, Ethan Medina. And he's having the count 1-0. Oh. Hey, 
high, 2-0. and oh. So many aspects of that make high school baseball so interesting. I mean, we've seen it all in these last, like, two innings. I mean, Landon Bumford's speed. And a good bunt. And it means a lot. There goes Tarek. Swing and a miss. Throw and it goes over. Fumich is heading to left field. Tarek will get up and score. 5-3 Rochester. Stolen base and an E2. Again, Tarek is he likes those he likes those moments. Well, he was running way early on that one. Yeah, and it was it was foul tipped into the mitt. I mean, LASIK caught it, but I don't know if if the foul tip maybe LASIK had to reach into his glove and it was maybe just hard to find how to get a good grip. But he wound up tossing it down the line. Base on balls. Medina on for the second time today. A runner at first, two outs for Evan Elliott. Now batting center fielder, Evan Elliott. And Evan's had a rough day. He struck out all three times. He's, his, his contribution was on the mound. Pitches a strike. There goes the runner. Throw. Safe. Stolen base for Medina. That's his second stolen base on the day. Rochester with three runs on two hits this inning, and one of the hits was a bunt. <laughs> they have two hits for the game, but they have five runs. Put in play. Kind of a tricky hop for Snedeker. Throws to Gerber for the out, and that retires the side. Three runs, two hits. One error, one left. At the end of six innings, Rochester leads Culver Academy 5-3. to three. You're watching RTC TV4. Have the Zebras committed an error in this game? Welcome back as we move into the top of the seventh. And uh, Rochester back in front, 5-3, largest lead of the game for the Zebras. And see if they can close it out here in the top. Ethan Medina is still on the mound, and he's got his work cut out for him with Schmiedlin, Grunberg, and Lasik, the heart of their batting order, do. But it would figure that you want to leave your lefty in to face Schmiedlin, a very tough left-handed batter. They've kept Schmiedlin in check. He is 0 for 3 with a ground out and two strikeouts. Let's well, see if they can do it one more time. Yeah. Zebra's three outs away from keeping their record a perfect. Yeah, I mean, and I can't remember a season where it started off so tough. I mean... And part of that was just to do to the weather, some games that weren't played that you thought of. But, boy, it could be 4-0 with the wins over Delphi and Plymouth and Pioneer. If they can get to Culver County, boy, that would be a great win if they can get it. Yeah. They're three outs away. Yeah, it's not just uh, it's not just a 4-0 record. It's, it's a 4-0 record against four really good teams. Yeah, yeah. But they still have uh, a lot of work. Schmiedlin yeah. is a tough, tough hitter. And you don't hit over 500 like he did without being able to hit 580 last year. I, I'm, I'm imagining he's been able to hold his own against lefties in the past. All off. One and one. Rochester pitchers have walked four in this game and hit a batter. Oh, 
Nice. Swing and a miss. So and two. Elliott in center kind of shaded, kind of expecting Schmiedlin to pull, even against a left-handed pitcher. Bounces that one. It looks like did Medina struggle with his footing up there? I don't know. Did he, did he tripped or he's kind of smoothing out the mound with his feet. Two two. Ooh, just high. Three and two. Yeah, this Schmiedlin, he's a good looking athlete. He's mm -hmm. I had, I had heard something, some things about him, but I had never seen him in person. But yeah, he's he's a good-looking athlete. He's a, he's a ball player. Three and two. Oh, Hit well crushed. to center and deep. Back to the wall, and that ball is gone. A solo homer for Connor Schmiedlin. Just to the right of straightaway center, and it's a five-four ball game. Wow, he tied. <laughs> I speculated that he'd be able to hang in there, hang in there against the lefty. Yeah, I think he did. Yeah. Well, now that I bring up Luke Grunberg, he's grounded back to the pitcher, walked, and flown out to center. Strike. Well, the good thing for the Zebras is they had that cushion with the two-run lead, so they still have the ability here to get this finished up. Ooh. Just outside. He, he put his hand about a uh, third yeah. of the way up. Yeah, and the umpire flinched a little bit. I think that yeah. was a, I think it was a ball. No, yeah. but One and one. It was close. Ball two. Swing and a miss. Two and two. Pitch. Got him. Got him looking. That's a good hitter. He just struck out on Grunberg. Strikeout number one for Ethan Medina. One away for the Zebras. Grunberg was three for seven on the season coming in today, but he's 0 for three today. First pitch. LASIK ground oh. ball. Bobbled by Huffman. Can he win the race to the bag? Yes. Two down. Job by Huffman coming back and recovering. Well, Lasik hit it hard. Yeah. Good hands by Huffman. He was able to knock it down. So often you worry about a guy knocks it down and he can't find the ball somewhere. But yeah, he, he Huffman located it quickly and stepped on the bag. And that'll bring up Beck McGee. Strike. McGee is 0 for 1. He's laid down a sacrifice bunt. He's struck out and he's walked. He scored that go-ahead run last inning. Only a sophomore. 0-2, breaking ball. One strike to go. The pitch by Medina. Got him yeah. looking. Yeah. Zebras win. Ethan Medina's pumped up. Kind of, did you do like a Zorro thing there? <laughs> Put the sword away like Chichi Rodriguez? Huh. Wow, that was something. What a game and what a job by Medina to recover after giving up a home run to lead off the inning, and then he got the next three batters out with two strikeouts. For Culver Academy in the top of the seventh, one run, one hit, no errors, nobody left. Final score, Rochester five and Culver Academy four. 
great win for the Zebras. They moved to 4-0 and on the season, and that was a hard-earned victory for Rochester. And they were able to beat a good team, a team that had been just explosive offensively, and they didn't have to use either of the two best pitchers. Yeah. I mean, uh, we did not see Tarek McLaughlin or Aaron Huffman out on the mound, yet they still were able to get the win. Let's take a quick break here as uh, Val gets the final stats. And we'll come back with post game here from Bob Copeland Field. The Zebras win it 5-4. We'll be back here in just a moment. <laughs> 